In this video, we're going to talk about blood type matching. And we start off with a list of, uh, of persons with their blood type listed and maybe some other information. And from that, we're going to piece together a Power BI dashboard where we can select an individual and figure out who they can receive blood from and who they can donate blood to. And in the process, we're going to do some data modeling and figure out a fun relationship diagram. Let's get started. So this question comes from Dirsu Pavon, I'm probably messing up his last name, but uh, Dirsu Pavon from Mexico. And this was posted on our Talk Power BI Facebook group. And Dirsu has also been participating on our five day challenge on my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, so yeah, the question, let me lay it out for you. And uh, Dirsu was kind enough to post screenshots, ample screenshots of his data model. So he has the blood type information, just a list of blood types, and then the mapping from what the blood type can donate to and what the uh, what the, the blood type can receive from or what can be donated from. And of course, he has uh, the list of employees in this case, and he had a, a diagram set up, and but he was finding it challenging to show the employees after selecting a specific one uh, who can donate or who can receive from that selected employees. And that's where we're gonna help him out over here. Uh, shout out to Gellert Adams, Steve Ross, James Hinton, Levy Barbosa, uh, and Rich Caprio who chimed in. And I love kind of seeing that. A special shout out to James Hinton who also uploaded a Power BI desktop file, um, you know, which I actually kind of used a little bit in this solution. So let me just show you the final solution. So here we have uh, the final report and the employee can be selected and based on their blood type, you can see the blood type that they can receive, the, the, uh, the personnel that they can receive the blood from and the blood type they can donate to and the personnel they can donate blood to. So that's our final solution. But we're going to build this step by step because it's, it's, I mean, I could give you the fish, but I would rather teach you how to fish. That's more fun, isn't it? So I always talk about that modeling should start on a whiteboard or in my case it started on a piece of paper now i talk more about this now you might not have thought of this as a data modeling problem but i usually start there with anything that i work on and you can watch the power bi modeling best practices and we're going to put a link up here in the video for you and that would be a good place to start but again it should start on a whiteboard or a piece of paper so that's where i started and the first thing that i did was kind of wrote down uh, the information that I needed. And this was pretty similar to what Dersu had on his final report. But I just kind of wrote it down and I used an example, Alice O plus, and uh, you know, and just donate from, maybe Jane can donate, she's also O plus, donate to uh, John and Jane O plus, and employee table. And I had this idea where that we needed another employee table. So I just wrote down that next to it and then had this mapping table. So I just kind of scribbled this down and then I did this, but I did just, this just didn't appear. You know, it didn't kind of come fully formed in my mind. I built it step by step and that's what I'm going to do with you here. So first of all, I said, okay, I need to, uh, so I drew employee on there and I put Alice there with O plus. And I said, okay. And then I knew I had a mapping and for this one to keep it simple, I only focused on what Alice or somebody can donate to. So I just wrote one side and I thought I'm going to figure worry about the donate from ads uh, later. So blood donate to, and I wrote, you know, I just scribbled some O plus can donate to A plus B plus A B plus. Now looking at this, I knew that I cannot connect them directly. So I needed another table, just a master table of the blood types. So, okay. Now that I have that, I would probably connect them this way. That kind of makes sense. That's great. So that's great. And then I paused and uh, again, I already had that idea that I can't work with a single employee table because I've already selected Alice, right? So how do I show other people in that same table? It's just not going to work or too pretty. So I know I'm going to need another employee table. I called it employee two. And here I'm going to have John and Jane who can donate to Alice, I think that was uh, that was the thing. Uh, and and at this point, I looked at it and I said I could link employee two to this blood type, but that felt kind of weird. I mean, if Alice is selected, kind of O plus is selected, 
and then I don't wanna I don't wanna see O plus, I want a different selection. So I knew that I'm gonna need also a copy of the blood type table. So great. Now I have this table. Now this was pretty easy, similar to how I had connected these two. I knew that I would probably connect it this way. You know, it's a lookup table. That's how it typically connects. Notice I'm uh, I'm drawing single direction arrows, and I've talked about this in my data modeling best practices that the default should be single directional filtering. But now I had to trace the path, right? So now in a reporting scenario, Alice is selected. This is where our filter is, right? So and that's my filtering icon. But now the filter somehow needs to travel to employee two. Now we do have a path, right? So it goes up from here and then down from here and then up from here and then down from here. So we do have a path, but notice that we only have to watch out for anywhere where I said that it needs to travel up. And that's why you notice I organize it always, always in this, in this manner. The lookup table is up top, the data table is down below, or in this case, we also have, we have a data table. Employee is in effect a data table, and we also have a bridge table. So lookup table is up top. So whenever I said that the, that the relationship needs to travel uphill, that's where we need a bi-directional uh, uh, relationship or bi-directional filter. So this is where I set up. So this one is going to be a bi-directional relationship and this relationship is going to be up. So that's going to be a bi-directional relationship. But again, everything about your model should be intentional. You should design it, my friend. You should craft it, in, in fact. Right? It's, it's, it should be a thing of beauty. Okay, so now it's time for demo. Let me go to the query editor for this file. So what we started off was with a list of employees. Let's just zoom in here. Employees, I had that and I had the blood type map. Um, so that's what I had. From the blood type map, I created blood type just to you know, remove duplicates and then I made a copy of that in blood type too. So you can obviously do that. So I started off with right click kind of reference, not duplicate know the difference right uh, and uh, uh, and then I I did another kind of reference of this and I'm not sure if I was uh, okay so it looks like I was thorough so whenever I have copies of table I always make sure that the column headers have unique names so here notice that this one has blood type this one has blood type too just so I can kind of keep th things straight employee has the same thing so employee has uh, the name, blood type, department, and for employee two, I don't need all of the other information. So the employee table could have had 50 columns. Nah, you know, employee two, I only need their name and their blood type. Now, so that was the query editor. Now let's see where I ended up with. So now when I loaded it up and I looked at the relationship view, it looked like this, which is, you know, kind of messy. So I, I first thing that I did was, I laid this out in the same pattern as my drawing. Lookup tables up top, other tables down below. But I noticed that, uh, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of auto-detect relationship, the relationships were totally messed up. And often I turn off auto-detect relationship and every relationship, the whole model in fact, should be intentional, every aspect about it. Uh, so I deleted these, I deleted uh, the relationships that I didn't need and I recreated them and I made it to look exactly the same as the model that I had sketched out. And only, only the ones where I needed a bi-directional relationship, I'm only using them there. I'm not making everything bi-directional. Mm, you know, yeah, just, just don't do that. What's next? Query editor and report. Okay, now at this point, if you remember in my diagram, I had simplified the problem. I said, I'm only gonna tackle the, uh, uh, the who you can donate to, or, or one side of the problem, really doesn't matter. You know, I, I, I pick one side. So what I did was, I went to the blood type map, and this was a full map. This, you know, said, hey, who you can donate to, who you can receive from, but I added another filter here, and I said, you know what, for now, I'm just gonna focus on one side of the problem. So, and let's go back to the result of that. So here, now just with that, so I didn't, I didn't uh, define any measures, nothing. I just set up the relationship that way. And of course, I designed it so that a filter from employee can travel up here, down here, back up here, and then down to employee two. So that's it. All I have to do is select an employee, which I can do from the slicer. And you can see Anika A plus 
and this is the mapping table and again I'm still working with it so this is kind of a rough draft and then I want to see more detail and I can see that yep so it matches uh, received from A minus A plus O minus O plus and then this is coming from employee 2 and I can see that yep it looks like the right set of people got selected so we got that working and that's amazing but let's talk about the next level and the next level is of course being able to do both sides as was our original intent now at this point I believe there are at least two solutions one is we've already figured out and let's go to that table we've already figured out how to do do one side so this query had filtered to only focus on the receive side I could set up these tables again all of these and copy them and set up another one to handle the donate side I could do that but you know that didn't feel elegant to me uh, yeah it just produces a little more clutter so I did a little more work to make sure that it works with a single table and it involved writing a little bit of DAX but we're gonna cover that in a follow-up video but thank you to Dursu for submitting that question and thank you for everybody who helped out on Talk Power via Facebook group. I will see you next time. Until then, power on my friend. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on my friends.